<laughs> do not try to cure any disease with the recipe shown in this video game. When looking for a citizen, don't forget your vampiric senses. So people were given some cool uh, tips, like I can drain people to death, but I'm not sure how to do that. So, well, you what you do is I because I read that comment. So what you do is when the person pushes you away, uh -huh. they'll attack you again. So you just block instead of like attacking them. Uh -huh. You block until you can grab them and drain them again. How do I block? You, you parry. It's the button that they told you at some point. I'm sorry, uh, Jonathan. Mr. Hampton needs me right now. So let's, let's go maybe around to the side. Um, yeah, but the... You, you can do better than that. It's my turn. Oh, oh, God. Oh. Are we gonna just... Oh. The blood. Rotten or oh, crusty. Each heart contains the secret of life. Drink at this river. Dry it all. I mean, he seems like a jerk anyway, so I guess yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Oh, come on, you bastard. I won't bite. I will. Sir, please. You've lost too much blood. Calm yourself. You think I didn't notice? Stop your staring and get me to an hospital, you ass. <laughs> Insulting a good Samaritan. Not exactly the way to get rescued. All right, all right, sorry. I am in pain here. My guts are spilling out onto the street and you're yabbering on. Yes, that's a very nasty wound you've got there. Take my word, I was... I am a doctor, Dr. Jonathan Reed. <sighs> Name's Clay Cox. I'd appreciate you helping me to a better place, Doc. Follow me, Mr. Cox. Let me assist you to that better place. That sounds so... <laughs> I like feeling like I'm the vampire guy, like in that one scene in vampire movies. They're like, please help me, and they're like, I'll help you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Let me help you to that better place. I like being that guy. Yeah. Because they always have that guy in the in the movie who's supposed to be evil. And Let like... me give you my quippy line. <laughs> so, I think this guy is going to end up being a main character. So, if we kill him, we're not going to get his side quests. Yeah. So, uh... Oh, maybe I can kill him. Bring this fading light into the shadows. Dance with him the dance of life and death. Can't I just snack on people a little? Like, you would think I would be Well, able you to... do get some XP from the people that, like, the hunters that, like, attack you. You do get XP from draining them to death. I gotta release them. No more. Not tonight. Not like this. I will not take another life. So, I can't promise this is going to be, like, a good person playthrough, but I'm going to try my best. Mm. Come on, guy. Hey. Yeah, he wants to lay down and die. Um. Whoa, I feel giddy. No. But I'm going to try my best. If we get to a point where it's just, it's not going to happen. Well, you know what? The thing is, is that at least if... It is wise for the huntsman to sometimes let his prey go. But no famished hunter can run for long. At least if we wait until we know of more citizens, then hopefully we have a better idea of, like, who we don't care about. I worry that we're gonna, like, not eat that guy. We're gonna get in the hospital and some little girl's even like, Please, sir, the pain hurts. And you're like, like bleh. That would be fine. Okay. I mean, what purpose could a little girl Doctor, serve to the story? <laughs> I've little time to play hide and seek with new staff members, no matter how illustrious they may be. I found a wounded man by the docks. He answers to the name of Clay Cox. He requires urgent <laughs> medical attention. Already making the rounds? That's the Pembroke spirit. I'll ask our porter, Milton, to bring him back immediately. Thank I'll... you, nurse. What can I do for you? Dr. Swansea insisted we provide you a quiet office. You'll find it on the second floor with your name on the door. Thank you. 
Nurse Crane, isn't it? Yes, Dorothy Crane. Welcome to Pembroke Hospital, Dr. Reed. Your office has been prepared. I, li I like Dorothy. I'm, I pre I'm pretty... whatever. I kind of just, like, respect what her deal is, because she's like, I'm literally taking care of everything. I don't care who you are, just do your job. I would um, like to ask a few questions first. Is there anything you want to start with? Oh, whatever. And Mr. Hampton, the patient we brought in. How does he fare? I gave him a sedative to help him sleep. Poor thing was in quite a state of shock. What kind of man is Dr. Swansea? Well, you accepted the job from him. I thought you would have known about your employer. Sassy. Apologies, I've only just met him the once. This is sudden. I've only just returned to England. Dr. Swansea is a brilliant surgeon and the most compassionate physician. It's right to assume Dr. Swansea knows far more about me than I do about him. You'll get to know him soon enough, and better than me. The administrator has better things to do than mix with us. God, I really love his coat. You want that look? I want that look. When you become a vampire, I really hope that the first thing you find is a trench coat. Is a trench coat, yeah. Marcus, or an android thing. Do you just want a trench coat? Stacy, you know you can just buy a trench coat, right? They're expensive to get a good one. If you could point me in the direction of my room again, nurse. Second floor of the hospital, left after the stairs. It's the last vacant office at the end of the corridor. What you oh, I was just gonna say, also, like, if I'm being honest, like, it's not really my style. I just really appreciate the look of it, you know what I mean? I feel like... Thank it. you, Nurse Crane. It's kind of like, like it's kind of like pea coats. Like I love a sharp looking pea coat, but I I'm like I wouldn't want to wear a pea coat, you know. What if you got like one that like was your was your jam? Yeah, I'd have to find like maybe like a black one or something. So that lesbian queen movie I just watched, she literally was. I wearing... thought you were gonna say that I, so that you could be a lesbian queen, and I was like, I guess. What do you mean you wouldn't want to be? <laughs> Anyways, as you were saying. Yeah, it's called the Girl King. Warning, it doesn't, it ends how it ended in real At life. Least that so, not well. Mm -hmm. Stop following me. Well, it ended okay, but not great. Good evening, nurse. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed, the new surgeon here at the Pembroke. Dr. Swansea has already told us about you, sir. I'm Nurse Gwyneth Brannigan. Welcome to the Pembroke Hospital. Did he really? It's a good thing I wasn't hoping to keep a low profile. All members of staff have already read about your new blood transfusion technique. Dr. Swansea made sure of that. I see. Well, I'm a little surprised, but I suppose I'll just have to deal with this unexpected notoriety. You must know, blood transfusions are Dr. Swansea's primary subject of research. He is convinced it is the future. Uh, but she was wearing, like, an outfit that I was, like, swore could have been taken out of your closet. Yeah. <laughs> it was leather pants and, mm -hmm. like, big boots. Yeah. And then this, like, top that was shirt, but, like, it had lines of, uh, gray and black fur Ooh. across it all the way up and down. Like, ver uh, horizontal lines all the way up. Yeah. And I was like, did they just, like, go into her closet? <laughs> And dress this woman, because I'm pretty sure this is like. I'm pretty sure Stacy owns that. <laughs> I have seen her wear this. <laughs> How are things here? Not good, to say the least. We're struggling against an invisible enemy, more lethal than any bullet from a gun. It's hard, Doctor. I like how she's posing for us. Mm -hmm. An invisible enemy. Quite a poetic term for a disease, especially from a nurse. Sorry, Doctor. These last few weeks have been exhausting. We could all do with a good night's sleep. Do you think this hospital can survive the epidemic? We are all volunteers here, and we're trying to hold fast, but... How do we beat an invisible killer? Some nurses have already resigned. Did you know that, like... I can't remember what time period it was, but I think it was around this time period. I could be wrong. Oh, you mean the 1300s? Yes, the 1300s. But during, um, during the Black Death, <laughs> nurses were not uh, like it's not that they weren't allowed, but 
young women were deterred, were like they didn't want young women to be nurses because they were gonna see naked dudes. <laughs> and they were like, we don't want to subject women to this. And they basically all wanted like women who were like a little bit older, like well, mother I aged. Mean, they only just invented the first successful male genitals. So. <laughs> Yeah, did you? If you don't know what Sissy's talking about, there was, there was a, a there was a mistweet from it was the first successful uh, penis penis uh, surgery, but uh, the the place that was reporting it suggested that it was the first successful male genitals and just ended there. They didn't. They was just first successful male genitals or something like just that. ever. It just yeah. stopped. It yeah. wasn't like transplant. Or penis transplant, just yeah. The, it's like the first successful, and we were, and I was just like, oh, okay. What's so successful about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, they they, they wanted mother aged people because you know by that time they've seen a penis. Mm -hmm. They don't want a woman's first interaction to be like, ah, oh! oh god. But, like, women were just like, I want to be a nurse because that's literally the only job I'm allowed to have. Mm -hmm. Their other options were to be, like, sex workers, which at that time made it so that they lost a lot of even more rights. Mm -hmm. So you either could be a sex worker or a nurse. I'm not familiar with all the staff yet. Perhaps you could help me. Brilliant professionals, most of them. Dr. Swansea has a gift for recruiting talent. Most of them. Is there a problem I should know about, nurse? It would be inappropriate for me to speak ill of a colleague. Is there anyone that stands out? Well, I have never met someone as dedicated as Dr. Tippett's. He should be a standard for us all here. If only he were younger. Why should his age be a problem? I guess it's fair to say he's always pushing himself to the limits. He just doesn't know when to stop and get some rest. New Dr. Hint Corcoran Tippets. I like how she's like, <clears throat> I don't speak ill of my colleagues, which is really a hint of what saying, I fucking hate them. Yeah. Nurse Brannigan, if you do know something, please tell me. Anything you say will be held in confidence. No. I may disagree with some conduct, but in the end, everybody is doing their best. Hmm. Everybody here is just a good worker, and I respect that. Oh. This is fun. I like the needing the hints. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. So, I wonder if we were supposed to, like... No, I think we can come back to her and yeah. say, Hey, uh, I was snooping through your stuff. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. I'm new here. I've already heard about you, Dr. Reed. I'm Milton Hooks. The ambulance driver for this shithole of a hospital. That's quite a blunt introduction, mm -hmm. Mr. Hooks. You can call me Milton. I like to speak my mind, Dr. Reed. Perk of the job. Don't judge me, and I won't judge you. I'm not sure I understand what you're talking about. Well, I'm no doctor, but I'm pretty sure a gun can't be used as a surgical instrument. You have a keen eye. I learned to shoot during the war, and have carried one ever since. Old habits die hard. No need to explain, Dr. Reed. And if you ever need a better gun, remember, I may have something for you. Sweet. How is the situation around here? You want to hear the situation is all right? It's fucking awful. We lack everything. And it's getting worse every day. Are you really smuggling weapons through the hospital? And why not? I've already been attacked by patients, you know. And by gang members willing to steal my money. But you're not defending yourself. You're selling guns to civilians. You keep people alive your own way, Doctor. I offer them another way to protect their health. Oh, okay, whatever. You know, so what do you do I don't exactly know you. in this hospital? Apart from smuggling guns, I mean. I've been an ambulance driver since... Too long, I guess. I bring sick people here night and day. It's a dirty job, but I get it done. Most of the time. Sorry, we're so, saying. about the like smuggling guns thing, it's interesting because... Normal. I feel like if this was set in like this day and age, I'd be like, oh, like you shouldn't sell guns illegally. But in 
this time period. Well, I mean, not even so much the time period, just the setting where vampires are running around. Well, that's what I'm saying. In this time period and setting where there's, like, freaking vampires running around and, like... Probably werewolves. You don't know, you know? And, and like... It doesn't. It it it. There, a lot more onus is put on the individual to like take care of themselves. It's the same thing we were talking about with those guys looting the corpse, where it's like, if someone were to loot a corpse, like it's kind of like, okay, well, what were the circumstances that? Yeah, exactly. Well, know? yeah, because first of all, don't, don't you know, smuggle weapons, kids. But <laughs> if you're in a, a situation where vampires and werewolves are running around, fine. But only then, and if you're sure there's vampires. That's my rule. Mm -hmm. And if you're not 100% sure there's vampires, don't smuggle weapons. So that's my advice. Since you're on the front line, how is the sanitary situation in this vicinity? It's a complete disaster. It's even getting dangerous to enter some streets or buildings. Even the locals attack you. It seems as if this, like, at least this area of London is like just in complete chaos. There's just well, no order. Didn't you see how like when they when we enter a new area it says district stable or mm -hmm. instable or like whatever? I read somewhere that like you can be in control on how stable or instable it is. So I think if you like kill a bunch of people it becomes more unstable, unstable because people are like we're dying. I, did they actually say that or was that just something I said to you? Cuz no, I, I read I, it in a comment. Oh, because I said that in our previous uh, oh video. Well, you're probably right. I think somebody was like, they were saying like, if you go, because I was saying like, I wonder if you kill a bunch of people, if that makes. I think it somebody unstable. in the comments was confirming that you were correct. Oh, cool. It sounds like things have been a bit rough recently. What's happened? Yesterday, I got attacked by the patient I was bringing in. I escaped through the hospital's garden but I lost my wallet when I was running. You left an infected patient outside the hospital. That's incredibly dangerous. Go there yourself if you want, but be careful, doctor. I'd rather not bring your dead body back. What happened? Ooh, local investigate midnight in the garden of good and evil. A new citizen investigation is available. That's cool. Oh. You can start a new system by quest or tracking it with X and access your maps. So I I don't think it's available. We're in the middle of dialogue maybe. I don't know. No, it's tracked. Oh. I'd like to see your goods. Wise choice, Dr. Reed. <laughs> a reliable gun is what everybody needs these days. Hey, you shouldn't be show me your show me your goods. Hey, you shouldn't be trading goods, but since you're here, let me see. No, I kind of but I kind of like the way it's put like show me your goods because that can mean a lot show of different me the goods. things. And he's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, hold on. You got to buy me dinner first. Exactly. So, let's see. I know that if we buy some stuff, how much money do we have? 52 coins. Pounds. Coppers. Coins, coppers. Coins. Shillings. Oh, we should buy some. Whoa. Hey, you got like no money left. It's okay. I'm sure we'll make more money the beginning of the game, but I wanted to be able to craft something at some point. Because oh. those are Another crafting items. The glorious battalion of Pembroke. I like how uh, a lot of the people you talk to are pretty flushed out. I think that's a nice thing. Good evening, sir. So it is true. The famous Dr. Reed has joined us. I can't think of any better news during these terrible times. Do we know each other? Actually, yes. We met once before at the Rockefeller University in New York. Dr. Tippett, yes, I remember. I was assisting Professor Carell in his research about coronary bypasses. He had nothing but praise for you. 
He was also very confident about your future. And look at you now. Eminent surgeon and blood transfusion specialist. What is the Pembroke Hospital situation? And please, speak freely. This hospital is not exactly the best of London. I'm sure you are used to working in a better environment. It's more than enough. In any case, the personnel of a hospital are much more important to me than the building. Don't be misled by appearances, Dr. Reed. This hospital does not lack talented people. It just lacks hope. You know what I like to do? Is that I like to... This is by Don't Nod. And I, sometimes, like, you know, when you play Bioware games and stuff, you can see the same movement animations. Mm -hmm. He's using the same idle movement animation as, as Life is Strange. Mm -hmm. I think that's fun. What can you tell me about the staff in the hospital? Some are really good, and others are not so good. But during this troubled period, there is no time for slander. I prefer to focus on the positive character traits. Tell me more about cherished people, then. Nurse Branigan is a pearl. She is the most helpful and dedicated nurse I've ever worked with. A clever and cheerful woman. You really seem to admire her skills. I'll go even further. If she was a man, she would be a damn fine practitioner. Hmm. Any opinion about the management? I don't always agree with Dr. Swansea's reserve, but I must admit he does all he can to keep this facility running during this crisis. Ah yes, the burden of command. I was fed up with this concept while serving as a medical officer. Don't get me wrong. Swansea's a good administrator. I just wish he would get out of his office down again. So, uh, they're fucking, huh? Yeah, they're boning. Or maybe he just, like, respects her a lot and bones her. But they're fucking. I mean, it's possible that he just respects her, but I feel like... There's they, some... There's at least some attraction there because, you know, how she was kind of like, I'm just so worried about him. Oh, yeah, they're totally fucking. But I think it's more than fucking. Mm -hmm. It's amorous fucking. Mm -hmm. You're exhausting yourself, Corcoran. Maybe you should think about preserving your strength. No. We must keep on healing all those poor souls. We are the last rampart before chaos. Once more, unto the breach. Whoa. Nurse Brannigan is worried. Nurse Brannigan is worried about you, Doctor. Huh. She should not have told you that. I will have a word with her. You don't oh, have to it. blame her for her honesty. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm not that kind of man, my dear Jonathan. Actually, Nurse Brannigan's opinion is the only one I may listen to. Okay. So I like how the hints... I, at first I was like, he was gonna like bite his face off. Mm. But it's like, I'm here to help you! <laughs> okay. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. But now we can run back to Nurse Banner and be like, yo, you fucking that dude? Yeah. But we're gonna use our powers. Hey, are you f Wait. Where'd she go? She did. God damn it. Yeah. I look away for two seconds. <laughs> oh, it looks like they have, um, mobile. Like, they walk around. Because mm -hmm. that guy's walking around, too. 